everybody. I'm Kyle Richards, and welcome to the Abstract Sports Podcast, where we bring sports back to life with a fresh perspective on the game from abstract yet popular angles, as always. Uh, but we've got a special midday podcast for you, and I won't be doing it alone, as you can see or hear in a second. Um, I've got my good friend AJ from Dapper Sports here with me today. How's it going, man? You know, life is good, Kyle. Uh, I can't complain over here in, you know, Dapper Sports land. Yeah. Just excited to be here on the Abstract Sports Podcast today. Thanks for the invite. Yeah, no problem, man. Um, We always love reading your content on your blog, um, and so we thought we had to get you in on this. Um, But would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself, what you do, and how how all that relates to Dapper Sports and a little ball? Yeah. Basically, I love sports. I uh, studied journalism in school. Uh, did, did an internship for SportsKings.com, focused on the NFL, um, had some stuff mentioned by Sports Illustrated and some other cool websites, and then I just I just knew that sports was what I needed to focus on, and so so now I uh, started Dapper Sports, talk about how good I look and how well I write. <laughs> Definitely look good with that hairdo, I'm telling you. Yeah. Um, but I know that on your blog right now, one big thing that you have going is the Bachelor and Bachelorette Fantasy League. And from, up, from what you've told me, you've got some pretty good traffic from that. Can you walk us through that process? And Yeah. So uh, for all of you in uh, Bachelor Nation, watching The Bachelorette every Monday night, I go through and create a weekly cheat sheet to help you score big in your Bachelorette Fantasy Leagues. Uh, if you don't know the answer to a question, check out mm-hmm. Dapper Sports. We got your back. He sure does. Um, I've seen him put out this content and people eat it up. So definitely go check that out. Um, puts it out every you said every week. Yep. So well, when the show's going, obviously. Um, but just a little more background on us. I mean, this is slightly scripted, but you know we're still we're still good friends and coworkers. We're actually on our lunch break right now. Um, <laughs> but I'm the web designer at this company we work for here in Idaho, and he's a content writer. So we work really closely together. So it makes sense that we're finally doing something like this because. On our lunch breaks, we normally talk about sports anyways, and so this time we're just recording it. just makes it a little bit different. Um, but yeah, I mean, AJ, he's, he has written some articles for Abstract Sports. If you go to our website, go to abstractsports.com slash AJ-RUPP, R-U-P-P. Um, you can find some of his articles on there. Um, but you can also go to dappersports.com and see everything that he does there as well. So... Um, I'm so happy you're here, though. Um, are you ready to break down some uh, NBA Finals content here? I have never been more ready. I've literally <laughs> prepared all week for this. In fact, you might call me the Stephen A. Smith of NBA Finals Oh, predictions. okay. So can you explain what that means for people who might not know? Stephen A. Smith is literally always wrong. <laughs> I will be that guy for you, Abstract Sports Nation. <laughs> He's always wrong. So, like, <laughs> we you showed me a video where it breaks down every NBA Finals prediction. For, like, the last six years. And, and he always picks the wrong team. That's so funny because he always gets enough hate anyways for being so out there and loud and obnoxious. So when he's wrong and he's a sports guy, it's like, I mean, it's a prediction. You can't get it right every time. <laughs> Let's be honest. But when you when you yell into the microphone... Yeah. Every single day, and you get it wrong, you know people are gonna hate you. But we'll we'll have to like post a link to the video or something. So yeah, we'll we'll drop that. a link in the description because so you guys can see what we're talking about. It's pretty funny seeing his progression as he's doing his predictions over the years, because it's like basically straight downhill. But it's like somewhere in the middle, he gets this energy like I'm gonna get it right this year. So like in two two of those clips from like 2014, 2015. He is like yelling his prediction because he's like, I'm going to be right this year. And then he still ends up being wrong. And then the next few years, he's just kind of like, it's going to be the Warriors. Or it's going to be the Cavaliers. <laughs> Sorry, the, the Jimmy Johns guy just came in and it did nowhere to go. So I was like pointing through oh, the window. Yeah. Like, There's the <laughs> That's all right. We'll leave that in there. This is this is real life. Jimmy Johns, this is not a paid, uh, you know, yeah, you whatever just, it's called. You just like, happened to interrupt our production. It's all right. Uh, <laughs> Buy a Jimmy John's sandwich for lunch today. <laughs> fast delivery. Jimmy John's fast. <laughs> um, so, some quick facts about this series. Um, first of all, the game. Game one is tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern time. That would be 7 o'clock our time. 
Uh, and I can't even explain how excited I am. I feel like everybody's been waiting for this <clears throat> matchup again in the finals. And now that it's finally here, I can't contain myself. And like tomorrow, I don't even know where I'm going to be for this game, but I know I'm going to be glued to a TV. Um, but what is what part about this series in particular are you most excited about? I am honestly just excited that both teams are actually healthy. Two two yeah. years ago, you know, the Cavs didn't have Kyrie. They didn't have Kevin Love. Thanks to Kelly Olenek ripping his arm out of his socket. <laughs> uh, <laughs> last year, Steph hurt his knee against the Rockets. And then, you know, he, he played, but he... He was not Steph Curry, the MVP. True. And then Kevin Love was out once again. Mm-hmm. You know, this year you have Steph, Clay, Draymond, and KD on the Warriors. KD's the big one. KD is the big one. And on the Cavs, you got Kevin, Kyrie, and you know, some dude named LeBron. Some LeBron James. LeBron James. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you, you have the big three versus the big four. It's This is the matchup of superstars. Oh, what was it? Uh, this is the the first time in the NBA Finals that eight s- people who s- were in the All Star game are playing the most ever All Stars in an NBA Finals matchup. Yeah, it's crazy. Apparently, the Warriors had six All Stars, and the Cavs had five. Is that right? Ah, oh, gosh, I don't even. I saw. Know well, I saw a graphic, in. and it was like six players. For, apparently, David West was on the All Star team, according to this graphic. And I'm like, what? Because he's the, he does play for them, right? <laughs> Maybe it's maybe it's people who have ever been to an All Star game. That might be what it was. Maybe I don't know. It was it was it was weird. But yeah, this is one of those times. It's the first time since '83 or in the '80s I saw that. There's a lot of freaking All Stars in this NBA Finals. Yeah, matchup. there's there's a lot of crazy facts, a lot of fun things that make this series so exciting. So uh, just some more quick facts. This is the first time that any two teams have met three years in a row in the NBA Finals, which is kind of crazy. There have been a ton of rematches. Um, between like Lakers, Celtics, you know, uh, Pistons, Bulls, Bulls, Jazz, even, um, and that was like the two years the Jazz were in the finals ever. Um, Rockets are in there a whole bunch. Knicks even back in the day, but first time ever there's been a re rematch in the NBA Finals, which makes it even more intense. Um, but the thing that I'm excited about the most is that this series sort of validates who is the better team because you know the last two years, like you're saying, there were injuries. Um, and then, you know, the Warriors won one, Cavs won one. So this year it's like the best of three uh, series and everybody's healthy, like you're saying. So it's like whoever wins this is, is clearly the better team. And the fact that it's a seven game series helps prove that point even further. Um, but to go into some of my stats, um, the asterisk next to this series, it's going to be there forever, is that the addition of Kevin Durant. Uh, that was sort of the drama all throughout the season. Um, he left the the Thunder after losing in the Western Conference Finals to go play for the championship team that, that defeated them. Um, and, you know, everybody's going to keep looking at that and be like, well, if they didn't have KD, would it have happened again? Like if the Warriors win, they're going to always say, well, it's because of KD. Um, but if you look at the numbers, though, that's where things get kind of interesting because throughout the regular season – uh, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, Clay Thompson averaged 25.3, 25.1, and 22.3 points per game, respectively. Um, and then in the playoffs, Curry and Durant kind of stepped it up a little bit. Curry averaging 28.6, KD averaging 25.2, but Clay Thompson kind of fell back into a role position, putting up 14.4 points a game. So that kind of tells you where this series might go. Uh, Kevin Durant and Steph Curry are going to have a big part of it. But I think when one of those guys are having a slightly off night, it's going to have to be Clay Thompson that steps up. Um, but it's going to be an interesting scoring dynamic for that reason, because you know KD is going to draw a lot of attention from the defense, as will Steph Curry and really anybody on the Warriors. But you know they're they're going to find a guy to to take the shot, and their their whole thing has been um, somebody's got to step up in the right time, and. Like when Curry has a bad night, Clay Thompson steps up. Draymond Green fills the stat sheet with like near quadruple number, quadruple double numbers, or something like that. Um, <clears throat> but the same thing goes for their coaching position, where Steve Kerr is out with a an injury, I guess you could say, and so mm-hmm. Mike Brown's stepping in, and it kind of that whole mantra is like taking place throughout the entire team of the Golden State Warriors. But um, with all of that in mind, like. 
talking about Clay Thompson being a role player in this mm-hmm. series, he was the guy who put up 11 three-pointers in game six last year against the Thunder. They were down to the Thunder 3-2 to two in that series, and it was nobody but Clay Thompson who stepped up and hit 11 three-pointers, making up for at least 33 points of that game, um, to take them on to game seven, where the Warriors eventually beat them. So he's going to have a big, big role in this game. But I, with all these numbers, you could probably guess I'm, I kind of I mean, I'm going to go with the Warriors. And I sound kind of doubtful about that. And the reason is because I think they're going to have to grind it out in like six or seven games. Um, and what I'm a big believer in the intangibles. I mean, that's what the abstract sports blog is all about. And so I have a feeling that the, the revenge that they want to, they're seeking in this uh, re rematch is going to like take hold within that team. And they're going to pull this one out. Uh, but how lucky would we be to see another game seven? Could you imagine what that would be like? <laughs> Could you imagine another like LeBron James chase down block to end like Game Seven of this best two out of three NBA Finals oh goodness, series? That'd like, be wild. <laughs> or like, you know the uh, the Villanova North Carolina championship game. Someone mm-hmm. hits a three at the buzzer in Game Seven to you know really say who is that team? Yeah, as a basketball fan, that's what you hope for. It goes to Game Seven. And it's a buzzer-beating shot that wins the game. That's like the epitome of awesome. <laughs> well, and it's crazy. I mean, as of right now, we might not even get a game seven. The Warriors, you know, they just can't stop winning. It's true. They uh, the the first team ever to go twelve and zero through the first three rounds and sweep their first three opponents to get to the NBA Finals. And then the, obviously, I mean, the only bump in the road for the Cavs was that game three against the Celtics, where LeBron just had a terrible night. Um, a lot of people will say there's no excuse for that, but yeah, they felt bad for Isaiah Thomas. That dude, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that dude, kind of his life is not too great right now. So. Yeah, he's got the off season now to to clear things up a little bit and come back stronger next year. Oh yeah, but but I mean, LeBron can't have that kind of a night in really any of these games if they're going to stand a chance. Because if it's like I mean, every like like they say in the playoffs, every play matters in mm-hmm. every game. It's even more heightened, more focused on that point that every play matters in the finals. I know, man. Kyle, I like your pick. Okay. I like Thanks. your pick. <laughs> um, the, like I said, the Warriors, they literally just can't not win right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and in those, those 12 wins, they won 11 of them by more than 10 points with an average margin of victory of 16.3 points per game, the biggest margin of victory ever within a playoffs. Mm-hmm. But the Cavaliers are going to win. What, and why do you say that? <laughs> two words. LeBron James. <laughs> Just two words? Two words. Okay. Okay. Both teams, awesome. Okay. But this whole playoffs has been about LeBron James proving that he is the greatest of all time. Hashtag GOAT. <laughs> okay, he passed Michael Jordan in most points scored in the playoffs for the number one spot all the time. The number one spot all time, and by carrying his team to victory against what might be the most stacked team in NBA history, he will prove that he is the goat. Did you know that so far during the playoffs, in twelve of the Cavaliers' thirteen games, LeBron has shot better than fifty percent. That's nuts, man. Okay. Usually, like thirty, like thirty-five to forty is a decent percentage. Ugh. Like, man. <laughs> in in the closeout game against the Celtics, he shot seventy-two percent, going thirteen of eighteen shooting. Like, the man. You can't stop that. You can't stop that. I saw another statistic today. Um, so. Second place all time. So I'm going to tell you second place first, okay? Mm -hmm. In the NBA Finals of leading your team in points in a game, assists, rebounds, okay? All in the same game. Number two all time is Larry Bird with 13 of those games, okay? Oh, my goodness. And this is just in the NBA Finals, okay? So Larry Bird 13 times led his team in points, rebounds, and assists in a game, okay? LeBron James has done that 39 times. (laughs) Okay, 39 (laughs) times. And you know what? We are about to see four more of those, and he is going to carry his team to victory. (laughs) 
to victory to bring the second championship back to Cleveland. You think it's going to happen? Hey, he's going to do it before the Browns do. So <laughs> we all know that <laughs> he's got to carry the slack for the. Hey, whole they've been Cleveland. stacking their their roster a little bit this year. I'm I'm seeing them. I see you, Browns. Kind of. I, mean, I, I won't be watching you though, <laughs> but I see you. Um, honestly, like I mean, I'm picking the Warriors, and it's going to be a long series. It could go either way. I mean, I have a lot of respect for LeBron, and he's definitely proved himself in these playoffs. I mean, he has, you know, over the years, he continues to wow people. I mean, like, even even today, if you watch a game, regular season game with LeBron James in it, the commentators are always, like, just in awe at what he's doing. And um, I hope next year to actually catch a game and watch him play so I can say I watched one of the greatest to ever do it. Um, maybe we could go. Hey. hey, we'll do a little vlog. We'll put it up on the on the blogs. Yeah, but no, he's definitely proved himself, and it's just a matter of getting through the super duper team that's in Oakland, you know. Mm-hmm. And where they have home court advantage, I think that just gives them a slight edge. Um, but you know that whenever they're in Cleveland, they're going to bring the Heat to the sixth man. So. They're going to bring the heat? the heat. I see what you did there. I see what you did there, yeah, Kyle. Yeah, they're going to bring the heat. That Dang. Was a subtle burn there. Oh, the heat. The burn. Oh, my goodness. This Dang. is getting out of control. <laughs> but uh, I'm I'm really excited, though. Game one tomorrow. Where are you going to be? Do you have any plans for the game? Kyle, I will not get to watch the game live. Oh, no. Yeah. That's all right. You got, you got other things going on. But I got DVR. <laughs> and I will literally turn my phone off starting at 7 p.m. Gonna, Mountain Time. I'm going to be blowing your phone up. I'm going to say... Just to test that theory. Shut up, Kyle. <laughs> and I am going to watch the game with no commercials, no internet Ooh. access, locked inside of a cave. Just like... I remember seeing a How I Met Your Mother episode where they're trying to block out the score of the Super Bowl and they put on... Or Ted puts on these secret goggles with like little pinpoint holes so he can't see anything. And he like goes into a bar and he's trying to get like his his wings and the sauce for his friends. You gonna do something like that? Uh, have you ever seen the blinders the horses wear? It's yeah. gonna be kind of like that, <laughs> except with a mix of like like wayfarers. <laughs> and so I'm still gonna look good. Yeah. Uh, but, but you're still gonna be blocking out the score. I'm still gonna be blocking out everything. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, man. Um, well, that does it for our 2017 NBA Finals preview. Uh, be sure to follow Abstract Sports on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. Yeah, we have Snapchat. We're, we're trying to get it going. But the username on all of those is Abstract Sports. Thankfully got the Twitter handle taken care of. Um, tune into our weekly podcast on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock Mountain Time, uh, 9 o'clock Eastern, uh, which, you know, tonight I'll be doing that. And that's live on Facebook. That's why you'll want to find us there. But we usually cover MLB, NFL, NBA, and other sports news. Uh, be sure to like and f- like and follow us on Facebook so that you know when we go live. Um, but I've got to say thanks to AJ from Dapper Sports for co-hosting this show with me. I really appreciate it, man. And uh, do you have any final words or links you want to leave for, for people? Or You guys, a- Abstract Sports is awesome, and we're super glad we got the invite to be here today and help out, you know? Go Cavaliers. <laughs> NBA. Ball is life. That Those are truth facts right there. Uh, but that's all we got for you guys. Uh, be sure to go check out dappersports.com, see their content, uh, and uh, stay posted for their weekly bachelor, bachelorette cheat sheet that they got going. Yeah, put uh, a ring on it. <laughs> and on that note, thank you all for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'll be leaving links to Dapper Sports in the description uh, and other things that we've talked about in this video and this podcast. I'm Kyle Richards, and you just watched slash listened to the Abstract Sports Podcast. We'll see you next time. LeBron James.